Hey, it is Faith Talk Live. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. And he lights up our life. There he is. John Fuller, focus on the family. John, how are you? Uh, I'm well, but no, you light up my life. Aww. You give me hope. <laughs> Before we went live, John sang that entire song from Debbie Boone. And uh, you should do a, a duet. With it's one of my favorite karaoke numbers, frankly. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> If I ever did karaoke. Oh, boy. I would like to see. I would pay to see that, John, actually. I just think that's wrong. So, yeah. John Fuller, focus on the family. You hear him here uh, with Jim Daly on uh, Faith Talk uh, Atlanta, faithtalkatlanta.com. We've been talking uh, for a while now about the Give Families Hope campaign. We'll talk about that uh, more in a second. But, John, we want to get uh, just down home and personal with you. What's your favorite? Uh -oh. Yep. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Go. Uh, you know, we talked about this last night. My mother-in-law is living with us, and, and we were talking about it, and um, it's not Miracle on 34th Street. Um, it, it might be White Christmas. I mean, mm -hmm. I know It's a Wonderful Life is one of one of the faves for everybody, but those, it's one of those two, and maybe, maybe it's just time for me to break out um, White Christmas. That yeah. has some nice, warm sentimental. I will tell you that I have never seen more than eight minutes of Elf even though that's one of the most popular movies out there. I just, I don't think I've ever really wanted to see more than eight minutes of Elf. <laughs> just saying. Elf, you have to kind of set your brain aside and, and watch it that way, uh, if that helps at all. But yeah. All right. But yeah, yeah, White Christmas, man. You can't go wrong yeah. with Bing Crosby. No. That beautiful, deep voice. Yeah. That is a classic. We have a tradition, and we have, uh, I don't know, about four or five or six of them that we watch with the boys in White Christmas is on that list. It's an oldie, but it is such a goodie. Yeah, yeah. There's some classics out there, and I'm sure there are some great new classics. I just haven't seen them all. Somebody told me that Die Hard was their favorite favorite Christmas movie, but I'm not thinking that. I don't. I, I don't. I don't feel the spirit there. My son-in-law loves Die Hard at Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know what it is. I don't get that. Yeah. John Fuller, focus on the family. All right, John, here we are coming up to the uh, end of uh, 2020, looking ahead to 2021. But first, uh, we've been talking about Give Families Hope campaign. We love this. The fact that as people give to focus on the family, focus helps so many people uh, helping uh, those uh, the families. You know, we've got the what singles and parents, uh, a ton of salvations. We read the stats uh, a couple of weeks ago on the air. The stats were off the chain, and this has been a crazy year, off the chain. So uh, the the beauty of all this is, is that folks can give, and somebody is matching that gift. Talk a little bit about how important that is and how cool that is. Well, so, yeah, we have some generous friends who have said it'll be fun for us to donate to Focus, and we're going to throw a little uh, friendly challenge out there for people to meet it, a dollar for dollar, and you know, the beauty of it is your $25 gift then has $50 of impact and uh, 100 and 200 and so on. Uh, but the, the the joy of it is that December is huge for us. This is the month where our budget gets made, frankly, for the rest of the fiscal year. For us, that goes out uh, through the end of September 2021. So as we round the corner here, we're going to be uh, spending pretty much everything that came in the door these last few months. And this month is crucial. So if people can get a sense for what Focus on the Family is doing, and as Jim likes to say, if you want to do ministry through Focus on the Family, we will steward your dollar, uh, your gift, and we will make sure that it makes impact. I'm glad you referenced the numbers, Rick, because we have had a real emphasis on measuring impact. And conservatively speaking, over 300,000 people in the last 12 months have said they're uh, rededicating their lives or they're making a first time commitment to Christ as a direct result of something Focus on the Family has done. Hmm. 300,000 people making decisions for Christ. That is the number that for us brings us in every day. We love helping families. We want to give families hope. We want to help parents who are struggling and bring marriages back together and give singles, you know, hope for the future in terms of marriage possibilities. But we love more than anything, introducing people to Jesus. And when we can do that with 300,000 people just in the U S just in the past 12 months, we think, wow, that's a pretty, uh, pretty impressive thing God is doing. I hope you catch 
some of the energy on that and want to participate with us. Now, next to that, the 300,000 decisions, which is amazing. Um, is there another thing that made you go, wow, God, this year? Because it might be in our normal human flesh and and the way we think, we might go, oh, gosh, this uh, this pandemic, it's just going to make everything terrible and it's going to be a terrible year. But what, what's made you go, wow, God, you are so awesome this year. Bear with me. This is going to start personal and then end yeah. um, on, a, on a different note. Uh, so we know um, that there are often about 100,000 marriages that we help with a crisis uh, in any given year. And the number has actually gone up this past year, partly because of our Hope Restored Marriage Intensives. We have a lot of people still able to go to those things. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the personal note is that this past summer, my wife and I went to a Hope Restored Marriage Intensive. The uh, the director said, do you want to come? I asked him if we could come and observe. He said, do you want to participate? And I said, yes. We've had a long slog of parenting, parenting for 30 plus years, the last 17 with a special needs kid. We've had a lot of stresses and strains. Now, we're not divorce minded, but we went and we got some great tools and um, just through the beauty of what we saw there, God does miracles even in tough times. And mm -hmm. just this past week, uh, we were airing a best of the best broadcast with Greg Smalley. There was a woman who, if you can believe this, was going to do marriage therapy with Greg's wife, Erin. She was going by herself because her husband didn't want to go. And on this particular visit, she was going to tell Erin, I'm done. I'm filing for divorce. This is our last visit. However, on the way to the uh, marriage therapy with Aaron Smalley, the woman heard our program with Greg Smalley hmm. and got convicted. Hmm. So in that short little drive to the appointment with Aaron, she said, I'm mad at you, Aaron, because I came ready to tell you we're done, but I heard your husband and God convicted me through your husband on the broadcast. <laughs> and so I'm going to stick it out. And I really, really think there might be hope for us as a couple. Wow. So. When we can do that, when God does that, mm -hmm. I get jazzed because we can't align everything. God knew her heart. He knew her drive. He knew that radio station uh, was going to be airing the broadcast at that time. He knew it all. Yeah. And that's the God of hope that we serve, the God who is sovereign over all. That's what gives me excitement and an energy and enthusiasm for doing what we do at Focus because we know we commit it to him. He uses it in ways that we can just brag that he did it, not yeah. us. Wow. John Fuller, focus on the family. You can give. And as John mentioned earlier, uh, there's a match and this is uh, where their fiscal year, in, uh, fiscal year ends and begins. So we want them to uh, go into 2021 uh, with a bang. No stress, no worry, but continuing to do what they do so well. John, that's an amazing story. Uh, would that be your favorite of 2020? Do you have one favorite? I mean, I'm no. I this goes on and on and on. You could, you could spend all day, but what do you think is your favorite besides? Well, certainly one of the favorites would be a broadcast with, um, with a family and it's a kind of, kind of a convoluted story, but the short of it is a good Christian family. The teenage daughter gets pregnant and they're praying about what to do. And, um, an aunt says, when I was a little kid, I had a dream. I was going to help a girl. I think I'm supposed to adopt your baby. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really wonderful restoration story of saving life and of God doing some remarkable things over the course of time to bring forth a little baby that is now part of a, a really rich family heritage. And what a story. Uh, you know, a lot of us are really pretty tight and buttoned up, and we don't like it when our kids do something that reflects poorly on us. But are we going to respond with grace and with mercy and with God's divine love? I think that's that's one of the favorite interviews we had. And I know we had a lot of stories from people that said, wow, we needed to hear that because um, after we heard your broadcast, our daughter said she was pregnant. Mm. And we had a better response because of the broadcast. Those kinds of things really just make a huge difference for me personally, because, again, I know God is in the details and he's working it in ways that we we just pray. We serve it up. He takes it and uses it. 
Which is a nice little segue to one of the many things that you guys have done this year, the Sea Life 2020, that one of the things that I just love that you guys do, uh, especially after hearing about the, the first one in Times Square, which was so awesome. Are you guys yeah. looking at doing that again for 2021? Absolutely. We just had a meeting yesterday and Sea Life 2021 is, is going to be happening. It's going to be structured differently. I think we're going to have uh, kind of an episodic video, some an eight or 10 part video series short little vignettes of kind of life heroes, if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, we're gonna end up with probably a 30 minute live video thing that happens on Mother's Day weekend. So oh, um, we we are committed to proclaiming life and to, to saying life matters, whether it's elderly. I have my 91 year old mother-in-law who moved in with us mm -hmm. during COVID because her life matters and my dear wife didn't want her just isolated in an assisted living facility for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. So we brought her in. That's messy, but it's good. Um, you know, we've adopted. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard, but it's good. Those are the kinds of things that when you tell the culture life matters and we're willing to step up and do something about it, uh, that makes a big, big difference to people. It's not just rhetoric. It's loving in action, as John said in First John chapter 3. Yeah. Love that. John Fuller, Focus on the Family. It's the Give uh, Families Hope campaign. We want you to be a part of it. Go to focusonthefamily.com. John, always a pleasure. Blessings to your precious family. And uh, we look forward to talking to you in 2021. Thank you very much. And I look forward to talking to you in real life. I mean, these, these Zoom and video calls are fine, but I'd much rather be hanging out with you guys in person. All the best to you and every one of your listeners. May God just reign supreme in your lives. Thank Next you, time that we're together, I definitely want to hear you sing You Light Up My Life in person. <laughs> that, would, uh, that would be the highlight of my day. <laughs> I will be practicing until then. <laughs> and, we, and we'll put it on Spotify. There you go. Let's take it. Yeah. We'll be right back. I'm Rick Probst. And I'm Dan Ratcliffe. This is Faith Talk Live.